For a very long time, I wanted a CNC machine, and then I got one, put it together, and it just sat down and collected dust. The truth of the matter is, everything kept taking priority over it, and I just couldn't find the time to sit down, get over the learning curve, and then begin the project. Well, in this video, you'll get to see me build my first project from scratch. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I'll give you more details on them later on. If you'd like to learn more about this project, just check the links down in the video description. I use USB string lights, a four inch face, walnut, and cherry lumber. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is laminate the pieces of lumber together. So we need to spread out some glue and get it on all pieces that's gonna be sandwiched. Before I get into the easel software, I need to jot down a few measurements. First, I need to figure out the thickness of the lumber all sandwiched together. Then I need to figure out the length of it. The next thing is figure out how wide is it. And the same thing goes for the glass. I need to figure out the outside diameter and also the inside diameter. I also need the thickness of the lip. And with all those measurements, I can now make my way to the easel software. And the best way to get there is going through Inventables website, which I'll have linked down in the video description. Once I get a better handle on this, I'll take you through the entire process from start to finish in a future video. The software is browser based and as long as you have internet, you can create. Now the first thing I do once I get in is set up the thickness and size for my material. I need to carve out a circle so the glass can sit within the base. And I pulled out the circle tool, put in all the measurements and set that to outline. I centered up the circle, then I positioned it one inches from the Y axle. Next, I drug out the square tool, resize it to the shape of the material, then I added a corner radius on it to give the ends a round look. And you can get a real-time feedback over on the right-hand side of the screen. I drug out a second square, which is gonna be used for the tray. I also added a corner radius on this to give it the same look. I made sure to center this up with the circle which was previously drawn out. I can now go ahead and put in the cup depth, which is gonna tell the machine how low to bring the bit. The material is too thick for the CNC to cut all the way through, so I let the CNC do what it can and then I take it over from there. The ring for the glass actually need to be a little thicker than I have it right now, so I just duplicated the same circle, shrunk that a little bit so that it can make the diameter a little smaller. Now we played with some test projects on here before and I realized it was cutting into the wasteboard. I didn't like that so I decided I'm going to use a quarter inch piece of plywood, mount my material to that and then attach that to the wasteboard. I may not be able to use this ID on every project, but I want to make it a habit. I also know the location I chose are going to be safe and clear of the bits. Now I can secure that down to the baseboard and I'm sure it's not going anywhere. Now I can plug the CNC right into the computer and once the computer see it, this soft button will light up indicating that it sees the drivers. Now around this point, it's a lot of back and forth between the CNC machine and also the computer. So I'm going to cut out some of that. So now I need to probe the CNC machine so it can get a feel for where the material is and how thick it is. Now I can turn on the router and hit carve. Now granted, I'm kind of new to this, so it's still an amazing thing to see this machine being so precise going back and forth and just making the perfect carve. Carve time on this, I believe was an hour and 37 minutes. A majority of that time was spent carving out this tray. A bigger bit could have definitely speed this process up, but we'll take it a step at a time. So I walked away from the project and when I came back, it was already cutting out the surrounding part of the bowl. And I realized that this was going way outside of where it should have been. Now this was all my fault. After I probed the machine, I moved the head by accident and I may have not put it back where it was or I should have reprobed it. So I stopped the machine, told it that everything looked great. The great thing is I had some extra material on the base and all I could do is pull it in. This way I don't have to redo the entire project. So I can now bring all the sides in and reshape this whole base, then remove the circle for the lamp and also the tray. And with those being out of the way, the machine won't attempt to carve those, which will speed things up, allowing it to start where we left off. The only way I was able to pull this off is by not touching any of the control or moving the head and keeping everything in the same position. So this was a cool way to troubleshoot the project and the problem that we ran into. This may have added a few more steps, but I thrive for these moments. I love troubleshooting and it's one of my strong points being able to troubleshoot things and get through a problem. Now I was a little nervous at the bandsaw cause I was just hoping that I didn't nick anything and just 
made it even worse. So I took my time just taking off little chunks at a time, not trying to do the whole thing in one whop. So I need to finish up what the CNC couldn't do and that's bringing the cut all the way through down to the bottom. This is the easiest method or way I can think of is just taking it to the router and using a flesh trim bit and that helped out a ton. I wasn't sure where to have the wire going in and out of the base. So I decided that if I'm looking at the lamp from this side, which is where we're looking at now, I want the wire coming out the back. I need to drill a couple holes that's gonna get me from the top to the back. Now you'll need to put a collar or use tape as an indication so that you don't go all the way through. Eventually I'll need to get the wire through the hole and up. So this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a string, pass it through the hole and use the vacuum to suck the string out. Use that as the pull string. The next thing to do is round over the edge and sand it down. And while I'm taking care of all the fun stuff, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. You ever get the urge to want to share your passion? Then Squarespace is a place to start. Their platform is extremely flexible and it's a home for many creators, artists, musicians, and designers. Just choose your unique domain and search through their massive library of award-winning designer templates. There's absolutely nothing to lose here. Just go to squarespace.com slash DIY creators, sign up for a free trial, explore the platform, and if it's for you, sign up and get 10% off your first purchase. On Instagram, I asked what was one of the best finished do walnut and I got a lot of recommendation and I needed something like right now. So I couldn't order some of those that was online. So I had to look to something that was local. A couple of the option was Danish oil and also tongue oil. So I tried two different version of Danish oil, medium walnut and dark walnut. Now it's so funny because I tried all three of them in different section, but they all look the same to me. I ended up going with the tongue oil because of the three, it was the only one that allowed the cherry to stay similar color. This is my first walnut project and I have to admit like the color just looks so much better than working with pine. But sometimes you have to work with what you have and there is no shortage of pine down here. I gave the glass a little dressing and I put on some spray on frost. Now I can take the string that I passed through earlier, tape that onto the string lights and then pull the lights up. Now it looks like we have one bulb sitting above the hole, which is great. I can now flood the hole with hot glue and then that bulb will never pass. I'm going to wind up the wire so I can contain it. This way I can feed it into the glass. The best way I find to do this is stretch the light out all the way to avoid tangle. The lamp is designed to take up a small footprint, but it also has an accessory tray on it so you can put small things. It's also USB, which is only five volt and you can power it from your laptop, PC, computer, or even your smart device chargers. And to put the icing on the cake, you can leave this stationary because there's an inline power switch that allow you to turn the lamp on and off. The walnut base adds a rich look to it, but that cherry just give it that extra pop. It's kind of tough to see on camera, but when the lights are on, it kind of blends in with that cherry. And for the record, that was part of my intention before I started. It was. Well, that was fun. If you ain't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I will see you on the next one.